Hey everybody, Quentin with Mid-South Outdoor Life. If you're like me and you do a lot of catfishing, you probably go through a lot of sinkers. Today I was going to make lead ingots so that I could make some more sinkers and I thought might as well do a video. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to try to video the process of me making some ingots and uh, share it with you guys. Maybe it'll help some of you out and save you some money. So here we go. First up we got to talk about safety. This is a dangerous thing to do, uh, not only because of the fumes, but because the lead uh, itself can be dangerous uh, if, if handled improperly. So first up, we got to pick a nice day. We don't want any chance of rain whatsoever, and we don't want it to be hot. Why is that? Because moisture into your molten lead can be really dangerous. Uh, one drop of sweat, if you're leaning over your pot and it's a, trying to do this on a hot day and you, you drip sweat into your pot, it can erupt on you and shoot hot lead all over you and then obviously if you have your pot outside and it starts to rain you know you've got a problem so pick a nice day pick a cool day and uh, that's a good starting point so we've chosen a nice cool day and we're ready to get started before we actually light the burner we want to make sure that we're dressed appropriately this is not the kind of job that you want to do in flip-flops and shorts uh, I'm wearing some leather boots, some dur durable blue jeans, a shop apron, a t-shirt, some safety glasses, and I've got some gloves here. So now that we got ourselves taken care of, the equipment that we're going to need is some kind of a propane burner, some propane, a pot. I like a cast iron pot, and I really like this one. I just picked it up from Walmart. It was only $17. Uh, it holds a good amount of lead, comes with a lid, got a neat handle here that shouldn't get too hot and a tab that'll help me uh, tip the pot if I'm going to pour straight from the pot. After that, you need a ladle of some sort in case you want to scoop your lead out. And you need something for removing the scrap from the, from the top of the melt once you get things going. All your contaminants are going to flow from the top. This is what we're going to use to pull them off before we pour our lead. You're going to need a lighter to light things up. And you need some muffin pans. Don't do like I did the first time and just buy one muffin pan. Go buy several. They're cheap. I've got about $4 in all of those. Uh, if you only buy one, you're going to waste a lot of time because it takes a while for the lead to cool. And it's best to be able to pour out your whole pot into a whole bunch of pans and then get another pot going while that cools. That being said, we're about to light this up and get started. Optional things that I didn't mention in the initial list because they're not required. This is a brush torch or a rosebud or, you know, there's a bunch of different names for it. But it's an additional heat source that I'm going to use to melt my lead a little bit faster. You know, you could just run the, the propane cooker that you see outside and you can probably hear running. You could just run that and eventually it's going to melt. But if you want it to melt a little bit quicker, save a little bit of time, get you an external heat source or a secondary heat source like this one, take the lid off, and that way you can heat the lid from both the top and the bottom. Of course you're going to need two tanks to do that but if you've got it at your disposal use it next on the list wd-40 and a paper towel i'm going to lube these pans using this method i'm not going to spray the wd-40 in the pan because i want to ensure that there's no excessive amount of moisture in this pan i'm going to spray it on the towel and then just wipe it in there there'll be just a little bit of residue in the pan that'll help my ingots pop out nice and easy so this pot of lead has been on for about nine minutes uh, and it's just now starting to, to, to get a good steam going. It's probably going to take about double that to get a melt, but I'm about to fire up the torch and speed that along. Won't really be able to get it on video because I'm working by myself today, but here we go. Okay guys, about 20 minutes in, I uh, probably, uh, probably used the torch for maybe a total of about 4 minutes, but this is 20 minutes in, uh, as you'll notice there's probably about what looks to be half the quantity that was in there when I started. I did have it very full, full over the top, the reason for that is when this stuff actually melts down you're going to have a fraction of what you think you've got. What you see on the surface is an example of some of the crap that's going to come off the top. Uh, those are clips from the wheel weights, uh, just the trash from the sticky uh, part of the wheel weights, 
and then there's even full weights in there that won't melt down because they're not lead. So what we've got to do is we've got to take this and get all of that pulled off of there, leaving just the molten lead behind. After about 30 minutes of cooking, there's a pot of lead. This one is a little less than half full. Uh, and you can see all the scrap there. Quite a bit of scrap comes off this stuff. Next step, I'm gonna use the ladle to take some of the lead and put it into the muffin pans. Time to get the ingots out of the pan. They're gonna look basically like this when they're done. Uh, as long as the ingots are solid, then you can go ahead and take them out of the pan. Use gloves to handle the pan because it's gonna be really hot. The way I like to break them loose is I'll just lift the whole pan up, maybe about eight inches to a foot, and let it fall down on the table. I'll do that several times and that'll rattle these ingots loose so that when I turn the pan over, they should just fall right out. Just like that. Okay, so that just about wraps up this video on how to make lead ingots. I do want to mention though that if you're watching this video to make lead ingots for bullets, you need to watch a different video. When you're making bullets, the lead has to be of much better quality than this, and there's additional steps that need to be taken. But for fishing sinkers, this is all you need. It's not fancy. It's not complicated. You see in front of you somewhere between 75 pounds and 80 pounds of lead. If you wanted to buy ingots from an online source or maybe someone in your area that's making lead, you could expect to pay at least a dollar per pound up to maybe two dollars a pound. I've even seen it more expensive. So if you do the math on that, that can get pretty expensive pretty quick. If you're buying your own sinkers, you can expect the cost to be four to five times that for the end product. This actually brings me to one of the best pieces of advice that you're going to get out of this whole video. I can't close out this video without offering one more final piece of advice. That advice is don't bother doing anything in this video unless you already have all the stuff that's listed in this video. If you have to go out and buy a cooker and propane tanks and all the other stuff that I listed at the beginning of this video, don't bother. This is a real pain in the butt to do. It's not fun. And in the end, unless you fish all the time and you're going to need huge amounts of lead, it's just not worth it to invest in the stuff that you need to do this when you can just buy the ingots from somebody who's already doing it. Why did I do it? Well, I already had most of the crap anyway, and I had a little spare time. So I did it, and I recorded the process for you guys. I hope you liked the video. I hope you learned something. If you got comments, leave them below. And if you want to see more videos like this, or just some of my fishing videos, click that subscribe button. Thanks.